and I continue reading. Several new things have been learned in Dianetics about the human mind. One is the time track. Every moment of consciousness, from an individual's earliest instant of life to present time, constitutes what may be called a track of time. During these consecutive moments in time, everything the individual has heard, seen, felt or smelled is recorded faithfully. These recordings may not be available instantly to every human being, but in Dianetic processing they become available. This time track then is a record not only of the lifespan of the individual, but also of everything which has happened within that span. When something is forgotten, it does not disappear from this time track, but is only denied to the individual by an occlusion occasioned by some physical or emotional pain. This pain makes it difficult for the individual to reach the data without re-experiencing the pain, and so the data becomes lost to him until he is processed. Processing is done by recovering data on the time track. Wide awake, without hypnotism, drugs or other artificial means, any individual can be sent down the time track to earlier moments. The preciseness with which he will go to these moments is astonishing. Many people are held in these moments by some past physical pain to such a degree that they are actually not in present time. When an individual is somewhere on the time track other than in present time, he can be said to be out of present time. He will be experiencing some of the pain and will be reacting to the commands of the moment. If you were to ask one of your friends how old he is and request that he give you the first figure that flashed into his mind, you would be astonished how often that figure would not be his proper age, but an earlier age. If you pursued the quest, you would find, by enlarging his memory, that he had been injured or had experienced some painful event at the age which he gave you in lieu of his own. This individual would be out of present time. It is a primary purpose of Dianetic processing to bring the individual wholly into present time. Processing is simply done. The auditor, as the processor is called, directs the attention of I back along the time track. The pre-clear, the person who is undergoing processing, is wide awake, knows everything which is taking place, is in full control of himself and is able to bring himself to the present whenever he likes. In a fully returned state, wherein the auditor has directed the I go back to a certain moment in the pre clairs life, the pre clair can be seen to approximate involuntarily the state he was in at some earlier period of his life. There exist, however, many severely occluded cases which cannot easily reach moments on the time track, and there exist people who are stuck on the time track so thoroughly that they cannot reach earlier or later moments easily. Lighter methods of Dianetic processing have been devised to free those individuals in such a way that their recall becomes much more adequate. Psychosomatic illness, as it is called in the field of medicine, is named in Dianetics a chronic somatic. Since it is not an illness, and cannot be diagnosed as such, but is only some former pain which is in re-stimulation. For instance, the individual who has what a physician 
may have diagnosed as arthritis of the elbow is really suffering from the re-stimulation of an actual pain or series of pains he has received at some much earlier time in that very elbow. In other words, a child which breaks its elbow at the age of three may at the age of 30 experience a rheumatic pain in that elbow. The test of all dynetic processing is whether or not it works. In the case of the chronic somatic, which accounts for some 70% of man's illnesses, the pain and discomfort of the quote-unquote psychosomatic illness vanishes when dynetic processing reaches and eradicates the recording of the original injury or illness. No pharmaceutical, mental, surgical or other medical treatment has been able to resolve or even vaguely control psychosomatic illness, a thing which dianetic processing does easily as routine. That Dianetics must be vastly successful in eradicating these chronic somatics is attested by the hysterical violence expressed against it by some members of past healing arts. Dianetics relegates psychosomatic surgery into nearly the same category as bloodletting. Occasionally, chronic somatics surrender in a matter of an hour or two. However, for the most part, highly competent auditing and many hours of work are necessary to resolve things which have been classified as arthritis, sinusitis, rheumatism, conjunctivitis, or any of the thousands of names assigned to these chronic somatics. The auditor in no case diagnoses the chronic somatics as an illness and does not need to make such diagnosis to resolve the chronic somatic. Beyond the resolution of a psychosomatic illness and human aberration, Dianetics, even more importantly, encompasses human behavior. Various specific states of being are occasioned by the amount of pain or painful emotion stored in the reactive mind, as are certain set of mechanical reactions in the behavior of individuals. Groups as well can be found to react in this way. These mechanical reactions to life and the environment are represented by the tone scale, a full copy of which is included in this volume. By finding one or two manifestations of an individual, one can go on to predict the remainder of his characteristic reactions toward his associates and his environment. One can discover what will interest him, what will depress him, how ethical he is, and what he will do in various situations. The reader should not confuse Dianetics with the arts of mental healing or with schools of thought on the subject of thought. Dianetics is truly a science. It is new and it is young, but it fulfills the true requirements for a science in that it is, quote, an organized body of knowledge that has been accumulated on a subject, end quote. According to some of the best known critics in America, Dianetics is considered to be the foremost advance of man certainly during this century. Its conclusions are derived from the discovery of natural laws concerning thought, organisms and the physical universe, and it is a bold strike toward further knowledge and the enhancement of man. Its limitations at this time are not even vaguely known. What it can do for the individual and the world cannot be estimated. According to Walter Winchell, the creation of Dianetics is a milestone for man comparable to his discovery of a fire and superior to his inventions of the wheel and the arch. 
Any project or any set of discoveries as vast as Dianetics cannot but challenge the citadels of conservatism, but these are easily challenged. In the book, Albert Einstein, page 120, Okay, apparently Albert Einstein is the title of a book. L. Infeld states, quote, In 1921, when I went to study in Berlin, I saw with amazement the disgraceful spectacle which attended Einstein's fame, end quote. Editorials attacked Einstein and mathematics professors, professors in one of Berlin's greatest halls told a large audience that Einstein's theory was, quote, the greatest hoax in the history of science, end quote. From Albert Einstein, we have the direct bequeathment of atomic fission. From Dianetics and the brilliant mind of its discoverer and originator, L. Ron Hubbard, we may have the sanity and salvation of our future race. The advent of Dianetics into a lethargic society last May 1950 created a stir which spread around the world. There were those who believed Dianetics implicitly and to whose searching minds it seemed the final answer both for their personal problems and for the problems of the entire world. To those who would not share this hearty acceptance of its revolutionary tenets, it was a fad, a cult, or even a blasphemy. Loudly this faction clamoured for validation, demanding that Dianetics prove its startling claims. It did not matter to them that never before Dianetics had any claims concerning cures or remissions of mental illnesses been validated, or that no formal attempts by any psychotherapy had ever been made toward this end. They sought, for one reason or another, to make Dianetics either prove its claims of what to them were fantastic cures of psychosis, or to withdraw once and for all into the obscurity of admitted defeat. Dianetics accepted the challenge. The ardent enthusiasts and practitioners of the new science provided a fertile field for obtaining the demanded validation. Prospective students flocking to the foundation and its branches from all walks of life and all levels of mental and physical health, were required to take psychometry before attending classes. Those who appeared at the Foundation for Clinical Processing were likewise given psychometry both before processing began and after processing was completed. The psychometry given one and all was the standard testing of established schools of psychology under the direction of fully qualified psychologists. Dianetics had not yet developed its own batteries of tests, but even had this been accomplished at that time, it would not have been acceptable to those who sought to discredit the budding science. They would have shouted that anyone could pass a test of his own making. Thus, in one more way, did Dianetics meet its critics on their own. The Minnesota multiphasic test is well known among psychometrists, college and industrial personnel. It has specific advantages and disadvantages, as have all modes of mental testing. But it is popular because of its simplicity and ease of scoring and because of the relative ease of picturing the mental state of the testee which it affords. Therefore, in picking a scientific, quote-unquote, standard psychometric test, the foundations chose as one of its tests the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory.
Among professional people, the Wexler Bellevue Intelligence Scale stands in high esteem, since it reveals more about the pattern of an individual's mental functioning than do similar tests. Originally, it was designed because its author felt that other tests existing at the time were more fitting for children. Early in the war, the War Department requested that this test be used for channeling recruits into the services, and the particular Wexler Bellevue, which was used, became known as Form B. Its special characteristics include the point scale as contrasted to others using the IQ scale, each item is credited with a certain number of points, and the total points determine the score. The Wexler Bellevue is divided into 11 subtests, and it affords separate scoring of 11 types of behavior. Subtests are grouped into two series, one yielding a verbal IQ, and the other a performance IQ. This feature alone makes the Wexler, pronounced Wexler, of outstanding value in the measuring of rises in mental performance and activity. In the field of testing itself, a favorite method of validating a mental test is simply by correlation with other tests. Dianetics has undertaken to give a broad picture of the improvement afforded in human behavior by using more than one test. Thus, it is impossible to level a finger of criticism at a specific test in order to belittle the unprecedented improvement which is brought about in an individual by Dianetic processing. It must be remembered, however, that testing takes up a lot of valuable time. Except for this reason, hundreds of tests might have been given these 88 testees to satisfy each and every one of the critics of Dianetics. Those who are not satisfied with the results obtained from the tests which were chosen are cordially invited to set up a testing program of their own, to send for a Hubbard Dianetic auditor to audit the chosen pre-clears, and and to draw their own conclusions from the results which accrue. The results of the befores were quite within keeping of the general average results any, any psychometrist would expect from a cross-section of the population. But the results of the afters were completely bewildering to those dyed in the wool doubters who hesitate to believe evidence seen with their own eyes. The signatures of the examining psychometrists Gordon Suthon, Peggy Suthon, and Delmyra Ibanez, PhD, EDD, are affixed to each bank of tests and witnessed. These psychometrists are registered professional personnel whose honesty and standing in the field of psychology is above question. In past comparative testing, it has been quite within the keeping of those conducting mental research to choose about five persons for examination, retaining an equal number as a control group. Dianetics has built this particular validation program around 88 persons. Never before has such an astounding number participated in tests to show improvement in mental health, specifically in the testing of increase in mental ability and reduction of psychosis and psychosomatic illnesses. A vast backlog of psychometry has since been accumulated many times outnumbering this original 88. Dianetics is now in a position to do the challenge, and the following charts are submitted as proof of the efficacious results of processing. Dianetics was challenged to prove the claim of increased IQ, and that Dianetic processing has as two of its byproducts 
the relief of psychosis and psychosomatic illnesses. Had the challengers any idea that this proof could be presented, they might not have been so blatant in their demands. And had they any inkling that the results would be so completely in Dianetics' favour, they might have withheld them completely. However, Dianetics has met the challenge. The arbitrary measure of human intelligence, popularly known as the individual's IQ, is not a measure of how well a person remembers. Neither is it a measure of how much he has learned over a period of lifetime. IQ ratings are a measure of an individual's capacity for learning something new. They are scales based upon how old in years a person has become compared to how old he is mentally. One might be 30 years of age and yet have an equivalent mental capacity of an average 15-year-old schoolboy. On the other hand, a particularly adept pupil of grade school, perhaps eight years of age, might have a mental capacity equivalent as someone 10 years his senior. It has become a cliché that an individual's IQ rating does not change throughout his lifetime. Indeed, until Dianetics, a gain in IQ scoring from one test to another was greeted with astonishment and an immediate assertion that a mistake had been made by the psychometrists scoring the tests. When Dianetics made the statement that a person's intelligence quotient, IQ, increased remarkably following a few hours of Dianetic processing, the clamor for proof began. The Foundation has this proof in abundance, as shown on the bar graph. One, yes, and there is a reference here to a bar graph uh, which I haven't. Uh, been able to find in this PDF file that I'm reading from. So maybe I'll be able to locate it later and insert an image or something here. As shown on the bar graph, one group of 88 persons was given standard IQ tests and their scores plotted along the horizontal bar. Regardless of whether these particular scores were 50 IQ or 150 IQ. One month passed, a month in which the preclears received about 60 hours of Dianetic processing. Then they were given a second IQ test. The score on the second test was then plotted on the vertical bar at the point which represents the points of gain or loss. Let's call the vertical bar on the extreme right of the graph by the name John Smith. John appeared at the Foundation for Training in Dianetic Auditing and before being permitted to attend classes was given a group of tests among which was an IQ test. He was found to have, according to the standards set forth by the originators of the test, an IQ of 125. He went to class, learned Dianetics theory, learned to audit effectively, and during the course received 65 hours of Dianetic processing from classmates. On certification day, he was given a second block of tests containing a standard follow-up of the IQ test he had taken a month before. His rating on the second test was 151. Thus, John Smith gained 26 points in IQ in a period of one month, and these 26 points are plotted on the graph as a vertical bar. Among the tests in the block taken by John Smith was the California test of personality. Various aspects of this 
of his social and individual personality were determined by use of this test. One of his most marked improvements was in his occupational relations. He had lost job after job because he couldn't get along with his boss and fellow workers. His second greatest personality challenge was in his feeling of personal worth. Prior to his processing, he had considered himself as incapable of handling a foreman's position or of leading a group. The after-processing test showed that he had acquired a much deeper feeling of personal worth and that he would rate highly with his fellow workers. The summary of average percentile scores as shown on the personality bar graph is a display of the results showing incre increases in the 12 categories listed. 76 individuals were given before and after psychometry, which included the California test of personality, and their average is displayed in graphic form. To obtain the average score of all 76 persons, it is necessary to total their scores and divide the result by 76. The average scores of the 76 individuals on the first test are shown by the height of the shaded bars. The average scores of the 76 persons after they had received Dianetic processing of about 60 hours each is shown by the height of the solid bars. In each case, there is an evident increase. Two graphs display the results obtained with use of the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory Test. As in the preceding graph, these show the average scores of a number of individuals divided into two displays, 21 cases, all male, and 7 cases, all female. The graphs are marked off in arbitrary scale form, beginning with 40 and ending with 100, and the average results of the first tests taken by the individual concerned are located where the dotted line crosses each subtitle line. The average results of the second tests taken after the persons had received about 60 hours of Dianetic processing are located where the solid black line crosses each subtitle line. The first subtitle, Manic Tendencies, means that a person is to a measurable degree influenced by compulsions which cause him to feel, for example, that he has to, com to conquer the world as Napoleon or Alexander set out to do. The averages of both the before and the after processing tests came out practically at the same point on the scale, about 59. Although this indicates that as a group there was no decrease in maladjustment, a few individuals within the group may have adjusted remarkably in this category. The second subtitle, Schizoid Tendencies, means roughly that a person might be suffering from what Dianetics defines as a valence shift, or the assumption of a second or third personality which is not inherently the individual's own. The average for the group in the pre-test was about 76 toward maladjustment. The after-processing test shows that the group as an average decreased in maladjustment or, in other words, adjusted toward gaining and recognizing their own personality. Under the subtitle, obsessive compulsive tendencies might be placed those who, quote, just have to wash their hands, end quote, after every chore, or those who, before they turn a written page they have just completed, are compelled to dot every I, or else be completely unable to continue writing. Persons in this category are compelled to carry out some routine, idiotic or otherwise regardless of what might be more important, 
at the moment. The remainder of the subtitles refer to various conditions evident in individuals, such as the feeling that everybody is against me, and the tendency for a man to feel somewhat feminine, as well as the extreme anti-socialness of hermits and pyromaniacs. Psychosomatic symptoms are evidences of bodily discomfort or disease which have no physical origin, while the undue bodily concern category represents the degree of obsession regarding sickness referred to by the medical profession as hypochondria. Although there are hundreds of individual cases to choose from, the test results of the individual displayed in the graph entitled Typical Test Results of One Individual are Average, hence typical. Case number 446 from the California Files shows that according to the results obtained from the California Test of Personality, this person became very much better adjusted than he had been before processing. His social adjustment or the manner in which he gets along with groups became more acceptable. The third bar in the first section of the graph merely shows the average of the previous two factors and is entitled total adjustment. As shown by the mental health analysis test, he adjusted his liabilities toward usefulness and increased his assets. His total adjustment is shown on the third bar column. In the third test, the Johnson Temperament Analysis Profile, there are nine categories of test results graded on a scale of excellent, satisfactory, fair, and poor. The greatest improvement shown on this test was in the energy he evidenced in the tackling of a problem and in, in his congeniality among people. His relaxation and buoyancy categories already satisfactory when he took the first test increased to a rating of excellent. When this man first came to the foundation, he was not particularly liked by his classmates and others who came in contact with him. He was often morose, sullen, uncommunicative, and as one classmate put it, downright unfriendly. A noticeable change in his social awareness came out about within the first week of his processing, and by the time he had finished his training, he had reached an overall adjustment to an extent that he was congenial to everyone and was well liked in return. Physicians in interested in Dianetics generally desire that several months of observation follow the release of a, quote, psychosomatic illness, end quote. During the course of Dianetic processing, before the results are pronounced permanent. Accordingly, the Foundation has not released information on any but remarkable recoveries, which seem to make themselves known automatically, until after this waiting period has elapsed. The cases which are mentioned in the second paragraph which follows are all, except the last case, more than six months completed. Dianetic processing does not set out to cure any physical ailment, but it happens in the course of bringing a pre-clear up the tone scale that all the chronic somatics of engrams from which the pre-clear has been suffering will disappear, often with startling suddenness. Since these chronic somatics account for at least 70% of man's illnesses, many, many people who have considered themselves ill for years have gotten well, quote-unquote, during Dianetic processing. Among the chronic somatic conditions from which our present available records show complete recovery 
are some which have been diagnosed by physicians as follows. Bursitis, osteoarthritis, migraine headaches, thyroid complications, chronic headaches, chronic backaches, chronic indigestion, constant fatigue, chronic colitis, and nearsightedness. Almost every chronic condition commonly known has been relieved or alleviated during the course of Dianetic processing. These are only some of the cases on which we have careful records. One gentleman had suffered from a chronic somatic which had been diagnosed by no less than 10 physicians or as psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis. None of them had offered him any hope of cure. For three years he was periodically disfigured by lesions which covered nine-tenths of his skin area. During Dianetic processing, the lesions healed so rapidly that fellow employees inquired as to the reason for his sudden change of appearance. Time will tell whether this recovery is permanent, but there seems to be no valid reason for thinking that it is not. Alcoholism is considered by some to be a physical condition and by others a mental one. Dianetics is not prepared to arbitrate the mind-body ratio of alcoholism, but the Foundation can report that alcoholism responds just as favorably to Dianetic processing as any other aberration. Aberrations which are apparently physical are easier to measure and improvement in them is easier to judge than in mental aberrations. However, the main goal in Dianetic processing is not the alleviation of chronic somatics, but the erasure of irrational components in the thoughts of the pre -clear. The apparently physical results are a byproduct of this. The Foundation presents this report as a brief survey of some of the work done by the Foundation during its first year of operation. Obviously, research in such a broad field as Dianetics requires time and careful, thorough planning. Studies which measure clinical improvement in individuals and groups are usually extended not over months, but over years. Even though a preclair himself can give a glowing subjective report, and though change in his abilities and behavior is easily seen by friends and family, it is difficult to measure improvement adequately. Tests which measure all the various improvements in a preclair do not as yet exist, and those which we have used in order to meet the challenge to Dianetics are actually admittedly inadequate even within their own fields. We in the Foundation urge scientists in all fields, particularly those working in biology and the social sciences, to test Dianetic theory and technique in their own laboratories and under their own controlled conditions. Dianeticists are eager to cooperate with any worker who would like to test or explore Dianetics. Dianetics theory and technique can be applied in many areas. We wish to thank those scientists and institutions who have already participated in Dianetic research and have applied it in their own fields. They have been of great assistance to the Foundation and to the science of Dianetics. We who are working with Dianetics have seen so much of what it can do and have become so enthusiastic about its effects and possibilities that it is difficult to moderate our statements about it or our expressions of eagerness to see it develop further. We hope that more and more people from all fields would join us in our exploration and our work. Editorial Staff Hubbard Dianetic Research Foundation, 1951.